Hello, Dr. Mark Contos. Welcome to daily coverage here at the American Academy of Ophthalmology in Las Vegas. And with me today is Dr. Carol Shields. She's the head of the Ocular Oncology Service at Wills Hospital, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, ocular uh, melanoma. Carol, thank you for joining me today, and I know you gave a presentation earlier that was kind of a comprehensive one on, on melanoma. And yeah. uh, let's talk a little bit about the things that you uh, were presenting. Sure. So uh, my pre presentation was entitled Primary Acquired Melanosis, and I focused on uh, the clinical features of primary acquired melanosis, like a, a condition that we like to call PAM for short. And I first uh, indicated to the audience that PAM is often mislabeled as racial melanosis and sometimes even mistaken for conjunctival nevus. And I gave them clues on how to identify it. It tends to be unilateral in Caucasians, usually around the limbus, but sometimes into the fornix and on the tarsal conjunctiva. And it's important to identify it because it does carry a very important risk for the development of melanoma. Right. And as you know, conjunctival melanoma is on the rise. Uh, studies have shown in the U.S. and also in Scandinavia, the incidence of conjunctival melanoma has doubled in the past 25 years. So I, I really think it's important that we're all able to pick up primary acquired melanosis before melanoma happens. Um, you know, as a clinician, I think uh, the most important feature of primary acquired mel melanosis is its extent on the surface of the eye. You know, if you have like one clock hour of flat pigment on the eye, it's probably simply racial melanosis and carries very little risk. But if you have two, three, or even up to 12 clock hours of flat melanosis on the conjunctiva, you're dealing with a pretty serious condition that carries a pretty substantial risk for melanoma. Yeah. How about um, changes just clinically over time? Is that something that we want to be kind of aware of as well? Sure, sure. So if you have a patient who has unilateral pigmentation in their conjunctiva and you're watching it, you know, year to year and it's getting a little more extensive, you're probably dealing with melanosis. Mm -hmm. And those are the patients you want to take a biopsy. And the way we like to get rid of melanosis, the most important way, is to surgically resect it. But often, it's out of control, it's too extensive, so we use treatments like cryotherapy, and sometimes we use topical chemotherapy, like we prefer mitomycin C, others prefer 5-FU, and even others have used interferon, but interferon takes many months and sometimes even many years to have an effect. How about uh, systemic, uh, you know, anything that, was, is it something that we should also make sure that we have the patient check systemically for any issues there as sure. well? Sure, so primary acquired melanosis is also known as melanoma in situ, which means it's not yet melanoma, so it really carries no risk for metastatic disease. But if your patient develops melanoma, then they are at risk for metastatic disease. So the most important site to check would be the preauricular, submandibular lymph nodes, cervical lymph nodes. And something new that has come out in the literature recently, and that is checking markers on PAM and markers on melanoma. And the most important markers are BRAF markers. These are markers that tell us that PAM or that melanoma is at greater risk for malignancy and for metastasis. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously for us, this is a very important thing. And you know, in ophthalmology, there aren't that many things that, that are you know, fatal issues for our patients, very few, but this is one of them. And it is something that we need to be very you know, comfortable with making diagnosis, knowing how to treat, and knowing when to refer also. Sure. Yeah, this is one condition you don't want to miss. You know, it's so upfront, so right in front of you at the slit lamp. You really don't want to miss that patient who might have, who might be Caucasian and have unilateral melanosis. That should be a red flag that this patient could have a precursor to melanoma. And that's when you want to have, you know, your corneal colleagues or your ocular oncologist uh, take a look and, you know, assist in management. Well, I want to just thank you for uh, coming and joining me today and talking sure. about this very, very important subject. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Thank you.